Hello and welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. My name's Ian and this is my uh, modeling bench where I do all my work. So here's a, here's a long story for you. Every modeler, to my knowledge, has what they call the Holy Grail model kit. The kit that they really would love to get a hold of. Something that is just in their psyche that there's something about that particular subject that they just can't get enough of. Now, I have a few genres that I really, really like, but um, when it comes to the English electric camera, there's something about that aircraft. I mean, we're dating, it dates from the 1950s, but it just, it's deep in my psyche, probably because as a boy, um, I lived on an RAF base for, for a couple of years and they were still flying these aircrafts. Now it wasn't this particular type, um, they were flying the, I think the T-18 target tugs, but the sight, the sound, the lines, and the general mystique around the aircraft, its history, um, its gravitas. It, this, it is just an amazing aircraft and from a golden era of um, British aviation heritage. So, um, yeah, the, the whole airframe, the camera family, holds a special part in my heart, and I really love the aircraft. But the T-17 um, electronic countermeasures aircraft, or... I presume that's what it is. I'd need to do up some more reading. But the T-17 in particular, some say is an ugly duck of the Canberra family. I say is the most amazing aircraft I've ever seen. Um, and I did see it when I was a young boy. And it captivated me. There wasn't very many of them built. But just its lines, the addition to the, the sort of the extended nose um, and the overall hemp colour with that beautiful red tail fin with the yellow lightning flash on it. it as a young boy, it was just heaven. Um, and, and I've always wanted to build this aircraft. Now, I have built a number of the Airfix um, 148 scale camera air kits, which are good kits. They need a bit of work, but they're good kits. But they never produced the T-17 model. Um, Alicat Models, um, the resin model company, did produce uh, a resin conversion um, for the early um, camera kit from Airfix which is quite hard to get, I've not managed to get. And then of course this kit here, which is the classic Airframes um, 148 scale camera T17 has been produced. I think it's possibly out of production now, but it's been really, really hard to get for me because purely when it's on eBay, it's, it's there for big, big money, really strong money. So it just so happens this particular kit came up and I got it for really good money. I mean, really rather good money when you look at the buy it now prices for the rest of them. So. I was so excited, really, really excited to get this kit. And I thought I'd try and share this enthusiasm for this particular airframe with you guys. And I, I just had to do an inbox review. So the box, you can see it's quite worn. It's obviously been in either one or a number of stashes before it's got to me. But the important thing is all the parts are sealed in the original bags on the inside. Now it might be heresy to open them up. I don't really care. I am actually going to build this kit because I really want it as a display model. But I thought I would share this experience of opening the box with you guys and looking at the parts for the first time and we can see just what classic airframes offer as um, this particular variant of the camera model. So enough waffling for me, let's get the camera on the table and see what we've got in the box. Okay, so we have the box on the table and we have basic box art uh, compared to some of the other kits I've re reviewed recently then. Um, this would be quite a basic sort of digital rendering of the aircraft over the south coast of, of England um, set against the sort of black box and then we've got the classic airframes um, logo here from Chicago, Illinois in USA um, English Electric Canberra T17 148 scale plastic model kit so this is kit number let me see if we can find the number of this uh, kit number here we go on the end kit number is 4129 um, there's a little bit of blurb here on the side of the box and obviously on the reverse there is a little bit it just contains detailed plastic parts um, and it's really not for anyone under the age of 14 but I would say these kits um, being short run plastic kits are not really for anything other as an experienced modeler. So 
if we lift the box, it is a, a very shelf worn box, as I said, it was second hand. We're greeted with ooh, decals for uh, walkway, camera wing walkway markings, a small instruction book. Oh, looks like we've got some extras, so we've got some scale aircraft conversion landing gear. It's a bonus, didn't know that was in the box. And then we've got a giant bag with everything in it. So let's just set that to one side and we'll have a quick look at the decals. So the wing walkways, they're actually really quite matte. Um, the carrier film doesn't look to be too bad and they look to be usable decals. Uh, and then we've got, a, there is three decal sheets all together. So we've got the, the classic high-vis markings. The colouring looks to be pretty good. Again, nicely glossy, minimal carrier film, all in register. Really quite nice. And then we've got the classic low-vis markings. So that faded out blue and washed out pink. And then we've got these beautiful, um, if I got the right, yes, we do beautiful your red flashes with the yellow lightning bolts. And then these amazing lightning bolts for the, the red tail fin. So you know exactly which um, color scheme I'm going to be going for. It will be this low vis markings with a high vis tail. So yeah, iconic um, markings straight out of the box and beautiful looking decals. Now, I've not really worked much with classic airframe kits, but I'd imagine those decals look like they'll go together quite nicely. So, as always, we'll start with the instructions, and it's a minute little instruction book. Um, what I'll do is I'll try and zoom in a little bit so we can get a better picture. Uh, keep it in frame. There we go. Can we focus? Near enough. Right, so there's a little bit of bump here about the aircraft. Um, doesn't actually tell you much about the T-17, but I do, I am aware that the T-17 was a sort of an electronic countermeasures aircraft with this array here at the, on the nose of the aircraft. And you can see the sort of side view of the aircraft, how iconic that, that nose looks. You know, they've dropped away from the little glass dome nose and we've got all these electronic additions and bulges and protrusions. It just, yeah, some say it's an ugly duck in an aircraft. To me, it's just oh, amazing. So... Um, single sheet instructions as we go. So number one, we're looking at joining the front nose section to the rear section of the fuselage. So we want to make sure that these halves are done on a very, very flat surface so we can get a good mating joint here, but then we can also get a good mating joint longitudinally for the two fuselage halves. Part two, we are moving into the cockpit and these will be resin parts, I think. So we've got the control panel, uh, ejector seat um, we've got some glazing to go in and we've got some interior details and this full co cockpit and under front undercarriage structure going together uh, part four we're bringing what we made with the cockpit into the fuselage halves and it's telling us we need six ounces or 170 grams of lead or weight in the front nose and that's the same with any camera no matter what manufacturer you buy it from um, they are a tricycle undercarriage but the point of gravity on, on the aircraft is way um, behind the undercarriage, so you do need to heavily weight the nose to get them to stay up upright, rather as being tail sitters, but you do need to be careful that you don't overbear the um, undercarriage struts and they collapse under the weight of the lead in the nose. Now, the airfix kit could take a lot of weight and not have a problem with the undercarriage, and um, I'm not sure how this one will fare, but we'll see when we build it. So we've got a nice sort of plan view of half the fuselage here. It's not to scale, but you know where the ejector seats are going to sit. And then we've got it coming together. Options are the entrance hatch open or closed. Now I'll be building mine closed because I want, don't want to interrupt the lines of the aircraft. Um, so if, if you're bringing these front two halves together, because you've already joined them to the rear halves, you're actually bringing in section five, the whole fuselage halves together. And then that's reflected in part six, where you can see it's all joined. Um, and then we're looking at all these little lumps and bumps, um, gizmos going on the side. And then we've got two struts going through the fuselage to act as wing spars for the joint, for the wing joining on. And it does look like it's a simple butt joint. So um, you're going to need some sort of strengthening in here to get the wings to stay on here. And it might be that I'll replace whatever's provided in the kit with longer um, metal tubing 
just to give you a bit more strength and we might do a bit of epoxying into um, the wings themselves but we'll see that when we come to the construction anyway at this point we're bringing on the cockpit canopy um, and then we've got positioning for the um, air scoops and such not underneath it right let's find here's part seven part seven we're bringing the wings together um, we've got a resin wheel well going in there we've got a rear engine nozzle in the front compressor blade with the engine going in the front and we've got an underwing scoop here and a positioning alignment picture here part eight we're looking at bringing the other side so this has been the what will that be the left side wing this is the the right side wing or is it no that's oh, sorry that's the right side wing so it's upside down so this is the left wing here and again we've got this underwing scoop that isn't on any other the, um okay so we're moving on to part seven so we're working on the right hand side wing wheel well going in rear engine um exhaust nozzle front compressor fan and engine nacelle and we've got an underwing scoop going on paying attention here to the markings where we can get it just going to zoom in a bit more there we go we can see that a bit better and then we've got the wingtip fuel tank and glazing lights going on and then we've got part eight is the reverse um, moving on to construction step nine so we're working with the obviously the fuselage shafts come together so we've got the horizontal stabilizers note the dihedral it's quite a pronounced dihedral on the horizontal stabilizers for the camera uh, and we've got a tail extension here um, with some more electronic warfare stuff in it obviously when i saw this aircraft operational then it was top secret so you don't know what was in it but i'm sure there are wise people out there on the internet that actually knows what was in this aircraft and what it did as a mission uh, part 10 undercarriage assemblies Again, we've got the um, white metal ones there if we need to use them in this kit. Don't come with the kit, but this kit obviously had them when I bought them, being second hand. 11, the other side, main undercarriage. 12, we've got the nose wheel, uh, wheel bay boat doors, and then we've got some more of the um, additions to the fuselage, um, whether it's strengtheners or what, I don't know, and a, an underwing under nose um, aerial mount and then that is it that's the last of the construction we then move on to the marking schemes and then there's always two two marking screen schemes and this aircraft was seen in the classic sort of uh, green gray over light gray camouflage so that's RAF Cottesmore circa late 1970s that's 360 squadron and uh, that's kind of reminiscent as a lot of the uh, camera aircraft and then the one i will be doing is this um t17a from 360 squadron raf witten 1991 and yeah it is just stunning isn't it if we can just zoom out a little bit we'll get that whole color profile in there classic classic cold war end of year cold war jet so we've got raf hemp overall over the light gray um, does it give you colourful ones? It doesn't actually give you colour core ones. Um, with a classic red tail fin. Uh, and then the low vis markings. Just stunning. And it's the same colour scheme as what the PR-19s fly flew until their retirement way into the late uh, 20 teens, I think it was. So that's the instructions. Quite minimal. But that doesn't... <laughs> detract from the kit now as i said this is a one piece bag so kind of reminiscent of airfix you've got a heat seal here to keep the plastic in the resin the resin is in a separate bag and then we've got the glazing in this end part of the bag so with scalpel in hand we will extract each part there we go so Looking at the glazings first, seems it's in one bag. So for a short run kit, it's actually not bad. It's not crystal clear by any stretch of the imagination. But I think with a little bit of polishing compound, you're going to make this canopy 
shine quite nicely. And if you compare it to the Airfix offering, it's 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 not that bad at all. Really not that bad. You've also got the two different nose options here, which you're not going to use. We've got a couple of small um, fuselage glazing panels here, and then we've got the wingtip lights and possibly a landing light there. And they're all actually okay. Um, even a coat of future is going to bring that up, but I think yeah a little bit of a polish on the inside and the outside that it'll bring it up beautifully so yes we can live with that now let's see what's actually in the main part of the kit right first off the plastic is really hard sharp crisp plastic i'm going to leave the resin to last let's let's look at the big pieces first so we've got the fuse two fuse last halves so move that out of the way. Move that out of the way. So as I said, really quite hard, sharp plastic, but actually beautifully polished molds. If we look at the shine that's on that plastic, now we've got recessed uh, panel lines. They're quite nicely in scale. If you wanted to, and I probably will, I'll be taking a scriber and carefully just running over them just to make sure they're all defined and nicely uh, recessed we've got a nice ridge here for joining the front and rear fuselages together and yeah one or two ejector pins they are nowhere going to be anywhere as a problem we've also got the rear exhaust nozzles here we've got some chunky plastic to take out so a little bit of care is going to be needed but nothing's going to be a problem now the attachment parts are quite thick and I would suggest maybe using a um, photo etch modeling saw to cut them off to avoid damaging the plastic too much. But very nice all in all. Now here comes the interesting part and this beautiful nose section. Absolutely stunning. So let's get a close up. This is the uh, right hand side um, or starboard side I think it is. There's the entry door. Um, you can see, if I can get it to focus, there we go, you can see the panel lines. This thing was festooned with panels all over the front nose um, where they had the electronic warfare equipment um, and it really does kind of set a, a quite a large protrusion and then obviously if you're looking down, imagine that as a joint together, it's going to be quite an interesting profile to see. We have got uh, a little bit of cock cockpit detailing in here. Uh, we've got the rear bulkhead, um, and then I think the floor of the cockpit here. We've got the undercarriage, which actually seems to be quite chunky, and it may actually be able to hold the weight, but we'll have to see when we come to building it. We've got the undercarriage doors. If I just there we go, undercarriage doors. Um, there's some ejector pins in here. They're going to have to be removed. Um, obviously, there's no. Uh, locate in tabs because it's a short run kit but that doesn't mean you can't get a nice join you just have to take your time and we've got a little bit of cockpit detailing in here but it's all going to be painted black you're never going to see any of it but nice nice all the same um, if I was brave enough I'd take one of these nose sections off and see how well they mate up there we go there's a quick test fit and the test fits pretty damn good, I'll be quite honest with you. But this is a huge model. Cameras are for 148 scale, they're huge, huge models. Right, wing sections. So we get uppers and lowers. So there's what uppers and lowers that match up. And we get a couple of the, these are coming off, so we need to be careful of not damage too much of them, but we might have to do a bit of filling. So these are the um, engine the cells, the intakes, ejector pins are going to have to be dealt with. Bit of a shame, nothing we can't deal with. So let's have a look at an upper wing detail. So huge surface area, beautifully polished moulds. I have to say, classic airframes really have done a good one here. Now if you compare these panel lines to Airfix's Canberra's panel lines, they look like... Um, trenches compared to these these are quite refined again they probably will need um just to be refined a little further with a a nice um pea cutter um if you notice on the end here they're kind of 
fading away. So you'd want to reinstate these with a scribing tool just to match them with the rest of them and then just polish up these with a scribing tool just to get them finished off really, really nicely. There's a little bit of flash on the edges of the kit. Um, again, short run kits, so what else do you expect? The horizontal stabilizers are one piece, um, so you can't actually um, position the um, elevators. However, I don't think they really were positionable even on the aircraft when they were grounded. And if you look at the, the lower wing surface, we've got some quite pronounced ejector pin marks, but we do here as well, so we'll need to flush that away before we join the two sides together. So both upper wing surfaces are quite similar. We'll look at the lower wing again, beautifully polished. Um, again, we're going to need to just refine some of these panel lines just to bring them all into sort of equilibrium. And we've got a nice gap here for the wheel well. And that's that's the bulk of the plastic parts. Uh, so it's not just a huge amount to the construction, which is nice because that means you can you can get this thing built and, and get on with it. Now this is the interesting bag. This is the bag full of resin. And this is where the detail of the kit's going to be. So let's just set that bag to one side. I'm going to get new bags to put this in when I put it back in the box. So we've got two wheel wells. We've got the compressor fans. We've got the exhaust engine exhaust tubes. And then we've got all these detailed parts. So this is the structure that goes under the front nose of the aircraft. We've got a beautiful cockpit assembly. There's some more of that cockpit assembly. We've got two fantastic ejection seats with uh, molded in harnesses. Uh, front wheel well. Go there. That one. Uh, we've got the intakes for the wing. We've got the tail. That looks like some cockpit part there. Got some really rather nice um, main undercarriage wheels. I'm not sure if they're weight on wheels, but there's nothing to stop us filing a flat spot on them. And then we've got all these um, aerials and antennas. Uh, we've got some of these ram air scoops here. There we go. And we've got the front undercarriage. Really rather nice, I would say. Um, I'm thinking everything is here. Oh, yes, and here's the uh, control yoke, pilot's control yoke, and another nicely protected part. So that's, that's our resin parts. They're all beautifully molded. Uh, they've got quite substantial connect, um, molding blocks, but nothing that can't be detached with a razor saw. Uh, a bit of filing. Obviously, being resin, we need to be very, very careful that we minimize the dust. Uh, we wear a respirator to protect our lungs from the dust because it can be carcinogenic and cause you some serious health, problem, health problems later on down the line. But um, there's enough of that information on the Internet. Some of the cast and box are just blocks are just going to need a simple filing. We need to make sure, though, that it doesn't foul the wing fit and it gets thinned out enough. But the undercarriage bay is full of detail, and you'll be able to paint that and get a really, really nice job. The compressor fans are really rather nice and sharp. Again, simple dry brush and wash. You're going to get a really nice paint finish on that. And then we've got the... I don't know if you can see that, but there is some beautiful exhaust details in there. You're not actually going to see it when it's in the wing, but you can, you know, with a bit of work, you'll be able to get that detail to pop. Cockpit, stunning detail with all the quadrants, wiring and such like. We've got the instrument panel, cockpit instrument panel here for the pilot, maybe. Uh, the yoke, the ejector seat, absolutely stunning. It's going to be a dry brush, it's going to look beautiful, so detail painting, dry brushing. You're going to have a lovely seat, and you will see some of this through the canopy. Uh, it's quite a big canopy, and if we polish it up, it should be really nice. Front undercarriage bay, again, beautiful. And the quality of the, the resin parts are stunning, really is stunning. They're beautifully polished, nicely sharply molded. Um, and 
it looks like there's very little in the way of distortion in the molds. So there we have it, that's all the parts of this kit. Not a huge amount, but it's going to take a bit of work to get it together. Let's not kid ourselves, this isn't a kit for a beginner. So, oh yes, the last part is the undercarriage. So we've got the two main undercarriage legs, and then we've got the front undercarriage uh, assembly. Um, I'm not going to take it out of the box, it's sealed in. It looks reasonably stout, um, comparing it to the kit parts it's certainly more refined though it looks like it's possibly designed for the F it is designed for the FX kit so we're probably gonna have to do a little bit of modification if we want to use it in this kit however it's not insurmountable and a bit of um, epoxy glue or super glue will get them to stick so I probably will end up using them so I'm gonna pack everything away in the box and then we'll get the camera back onto me and we'll round up with some thoughts so there we have it uh, classic airframes 148 scale English electric camera T17 um, thoughts well it's not a kit for the faint-hearted this uh, and and really all classic airframes kits are not kits for beginners to this hobby and to some extent even an, an intermediate modeler who feels quite accomplished with you know some more technical plastic kits is probably going to struggle with this 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 is more an advanced modelers kit um, you do need to have experience working with resin um, you do need to have experience working with kits that have no alignment pins um, you need to be able to do consistent filling and sanding and subscribing rescribing um, and you just need to have the skill set that's going to do justice to a kit like this now if you feel confident to do it and you want to step up to the next level it's a good kit to give a go um, it doesn't have just a huge amount of detailed parts to build and it's of a really substantial size that you've got a huge canvas to practice your your painting um, and weathering these particular aircraft were well looked after during their operational life so they weren't heavily weathered they were fading and um, obviously you would have pan lines showing up as as old sort of classic 50s airframes um you know they had lumps bumps and openings that did collect a bit of grime and dirt so it, there is opportunity to weather the aircraft but on the whole they were really quite well looked after and well cared for by the crews and, and they were the crews were very fond of these aircraft um operationally they had a fantastic operational life i think spanning nearly 50 years in the raf in one shape form or another and they were very, very capable airframes. Um, they were used by a number of different air forces around the world. Um, and they, they were even used by NASA um, to some extent too. So uh, this, this particular aircraft has a global reach and a, and a global fan base. So I probably don't need to sell it anymore. If you can get your hands on one of these kits, I highly recommend it. Um, like I said, they they do fetch a premium on eBay. They do come up now and again for a reasonable price. If you can grab them for that price, I recommend it if you're interested in it. Because uh, other as the Alley Cat conversion for an Airfix camera, if you want a T17, this is the only kit in the in the market. There are 172nd um, T17 kits, but if you're a 48 model, a 48 scale model like myself. This is the one to go for. So I'm, I'm really, really lucky to have gotten this kit. And I am planning to build this kit um, probably towards the end of the year. Um, <laughs> that's always the last stitch. But I am actually planning to build this kit because it's it's one of the kits I really, from from my youth, just it's iconic. And I absolutely love it to pieces. Um, so there we go. Yeah. Classic airframes, English electric camera, T17. Um, as always... If you've got any comments or questions um, you'd want to put down below, I always take the time to read and answer them, and I appreciate everyone taking the time to ask me and engage with the hobby and engage with the channel. Um, if you would like to think about subscribing, again, I'd be very grateful. I'm very grateful for all my subscribers and my regular commenters. It, you know, it, it fires me up to keep doing this. Um, and yeah, if you do subscribe, remember to hit the bell icon so you get notified of any of my future releases. Um, so just have to say, you know, thanks for watching this far. If you've gotten this far, um, happy modeling and we'll see you next time.